What's up, YouTube family? Thank you so much for coming to visit my channel once again. There's a lot of good fishing videos out there. I know because I watch it myself. So I do appreciate you guys coming to check out my videos. Uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you the sad fishing setup that I use on a boat in the Sacramento River. I know locally here in Sacramento, California, we're getting a lot of shad coming into the river system right now. So it's, it's, it's very appropriate time to cover the setup. The reason I'm being very specific about this shad fishing setup is because at different location, the setups are different. For example, if I'm going to be fishing from shore, the shad fishing setup is different. If I'm going to be fishing from a trip boat in the American River, once again, the shad fishing setup there is different. So today I'm only going to be talking about fishing for shad from a boat in the Sacramento River. So sit back, relax, follow along with me in this fishing trip, all right? Peace out. Welcome back. First, I want to shout out to all the local fishermen who've been showing me a lot of love as I'm going around fishing. I'm trying to be very discreet. I'm all covered up, but I can't believe some of you guys recognize me. I thank you very much for showing me your love. I do appreciate that. Now, as you all know, locally here in the Sacramento area, I have a lot of respect for connected fishing. They've been showing videos of how to catch shad in the Sacramento River. One of the videos about a week ago uh, they show was how TC caught a shad and when as he's reeling it up, the seal ate the whole shad and all he was left with was just a just a head and he's dangling around. So as a tribute to that, I revamped my beginning video. You notice the shad's coming through, got bitten by Che Yu. <laughs> <laughs> and all the head is left over hanging. If you missed that clip at the beginning, you better want to go and go back and check it out. As I said at the beginning, this sad fishing setup is only specific for on a boat in the Sacramento River. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. For my setup, it's uh, really simple. I'm using a Shimano uh, rod. In a, in a Daiwa reel. I'll show it to you guys uh, in the picture right now. It, shad fishing don't have to be very expensive. So as you see here, I got my reel. I'm gonna, this is like an eight, eight, 8 or 10 pound test line. I'm just gonna thread it to the fishing pole, like so. So I'm gonna show you from scratch, see how easy and simple it can be. Well, you can make it as complicated as you want, but uh, you know, sad fishing setup in the, in a boat is very very simple. So there you go. I thread it through. First, I'm gonna make a knot so I can put my weight right here, right? I'm gonna make a big double surgeon knot. Real simple. Everybody knows how to do that, right? One. two and you want to wet it with your spit saliva or whatever and just kind of tighten it up now you got a big loop okay okay after you have this big loop here what you want to do is make a little tiny loop in the end and I'll tell you that why in a little make this little tiny loop in the end okay so now you got a big loop and a little loop in the end. Why do I do that? It helps me to remove the weight easy. Watch this. I'm gonna attach this weight and I use anywhere between 2 to 8 ounce 
Yes, eight ounce. <laughs> so as you put this into this holder here, spread it out, put this hook here, okay, just like that. Now notice when you want to remove it, because you make this little loop, loop here, you just gotta do is pull it out, and that's how you remove the weight. So let's do that again. So this is how you put the weight in the end of your fishing line. Like so. And this little loop here is to help you remove the weight from your line. Pull it out. Loop it through. And you're done. All right. Now that's this is so this end loop is to hold your weight. Go up about 18 inches. Don't need to be a rocket scientist or anything like that. It doesn't have to be very doesn't have to be very specific. Roughly about you know a foot, 18 inches. Once again, make a double search and loop knot. This time don't make it too big. Make it about an inch out. So one, two. Tighten it up, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so that's you got one so far. Now go up by another 18 inches or so, make another one. All right, this line is so light, I think this is either a six or eight pound test line. Once again, double surgeon knot one, two. Tighten it up, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Go up again, another 18 inches or so. Once again, make a double search and loop knot. So go into it once, go in the same loop twice, and make about one inch out like that. Make sure you tighten it, make sure it's not going anywhere. You're almost there. You, you, you're practically done. Okay, you put a weight here in the end. Put in three hooks right here. Drop it straight down from your boat. And wait for the shaft to come by. Now, how do, I, how do you attach the hooks into these main lines? Now, if you forget to bring your equipment, you can cut out a piece of main line here and tie a grub onto these particular knots here. And you're ready to go. The only problem with that is that when the main line and the leader line are the same weight, it, it gets twisted up as the current pushes it through. So I like to use the leader line to be a little bit heavier than my main line. So for example, uh, my main line right here is, I'm, I'm thinking about six, eight, eight pound maybe. So I'm going to use either 12 or 14 pound test line as my leader line and I'm gonna tie uh, my grubs to it the grubs that I use my go-to grubs are already set up is a 132 ounce Aki grubs that you can buy from Walmart I think the regular price is like three bucks get them on sale is like a dollar and all you gotta do is tie those grubs onto it onto a about an eight inch leader line and attach them to these knot that you just made. I'm going to show you how right now. All right. How do I tie my leader line? So as you know, this jig already come pre-made. So I'm going to get my 14 pound test line and just tie a real simple knot to it. It doesn't have to be fancy. We're fishing for shad, so it doesn't have to be very fancy. I like to, to tie my I like to tie my favorite trilene knot, but you can do whatever knot you want on this. Put some spit on there. 
Make sure the two lines are tight. Cinch it really well. Make sure you don't lose your fish. And you need a nail clipper to cut out this tag line right there. All right. Now what I do now is I make this about eight inches. You don't have to be very specific, okay? Cut out a line about, you know, yay, like this, eight, ten inches or so. So in the end here, what you're gonna do is make a double loop surgeon knot. One, two. And pretty much that's it. Cut out your tag end and you're ready to go. Now it's a simple matter to attach it, this to your main line, right? So here this is how we do it. We'll bring back the knot that you tied a little while ago and attach it to one of these three loops that you made. Here we go. Loop it to that small loop. Pull it through, and now you are ready to rock and roll. Okay, so that's how it is. Here's your main line. Okay, and your leader line. You make the other two exactly like that. Put your line on the bottom, and sit back relax and wait until the shad comes. The first time I went out this year for shad fishing that's exactly what I did and we caught a lot of uh, shad that day in a couple of hours. What I didn't know was downstream from me, way downstream from me was connected fishing. So here is the action right here. Yep, you set the hook this time. Mm. The second time I came out chat fishing, I got a little fancy because I was able to uh, go home and think about what I did. I tried to change the setup a bit. So now I pre-rig it. So instead of where I make this little small loop, I actually put a three-way swivel. So I'll show you the picture here. So it's, it's pretty much the same concept. You want to get three little lines out there, make sure that they have enough room so they don't get tangled up, drop the line down, and wait for the fish to come. So the second trip that I went out for shad fishing in the Sacramento River, I only I use the same setup, but uh, I only got two for the day. So that brought me to say that for shad fishing, you can be prepared, you can get all your rig set up, but unless you find where the shads are coming through, you're not going to be very successful. So on the third trip, I got a hold of connected fishing, and. He gave me a great tip. I was fishing at Discovery Park for about for a little bit. Didn't catch anything. So connected fishing tell me go down to Miller Park. I'm not gonna lie to you, uh we were there at about 11.30 or so and 
the bite was very, very slow. I got a message from Connected Fishing. The bite normally turn up in the evening time. So between 11 to about 3 o'clock, we managed to land six of the shad. At that particular time, Connected Fishing was fishing behind us. Uh, he picked up, and I, th I thought he's going to go home. So you can see this conversation right here. Hey, brother, what's up? There's that big rod. Oh, nice, huh? Yeah, slow today. You guys taking off? No. You, you finding fish? I'm supposed to find you so I can find the fish. All right. So it turns out he was looking for a shad. So about maybe 15, 20 minutes later, I got a message, get down here now. <laughs> so I went down and parked in front of his boat. I think within 20 minutes, we got another four shad. And then the bite just shut off. There's a the man himself right there. Unconnected fishing. Find the fish. I'm fishing downstream from him. Oh, fish up, fish up. Almost losing pool, man. Got it. <laughs> Woo. Oh, nice. <laughs> No, no, leave it, leave it. There you go. You know, somebody want to fish, you want to wear this stuff? You want to wear it in so I can videotape it? You know Yeah, don't they? Where's the net at? Here's the net. Here's the net. <laughs> she where'd it go? Ooh, yeah. So here it is, man. You found TC. You find the fish. So that's how it is with Chad. The bike can get really super hot, and you gotta be ready. Otherwise, when it shut down, they're not going to bite anymore. They move. And you got to chase them down. Uh, if you do find somebody who caught shad, you want to go either in front of them, like I said, or behind them. Fortunately, I got connected fishing. I chased him down. So that's how I set up for the Sacramento River from a boat. I normally have one go-to setup that I know always work that catches shad for me. I have a lot of confidence in that setup. And then on the other setup, I'm always experimenting, trying different lures, different techniques. And as you guys know, I love the Z-Ray. So I can't wait to catch a shad in the Z-Ray. I found a little yellow red polka dot Z-Ray that's 1 16th of an ounce. I'm going to try that out the next time. Also, it helps to have a bunch of friends that can tell you where they're biting. Otherwise, you can spend the whole day not catching anything. So the last trip I went out shad fishing, I was at Discovery Park first. And I got a message from Connected Fishing, don't go there, go down to Miller Park. I went down to Miller Park for the day. We got a total of 10 shad. On my way back, I met some fishermen that were fishing from Discovery Park. On the same day, they didn't catch anything. So I always tell you guys before, you find connected fishing, you find the fish. All right? Thank you very much for watching my video. I do appreciate it. Be safe out there. Have fun. God bless. Peace out, brothers.